We're back over here at our Newton project. Mike is all signed off with his rough inspections. Installation is complete, and we are getting ready for blue board and plaster. Let's check out what he's got going on. It's been a little while since we've had an update, but a lot has been done. We are through mechanical rough. Mechanicals are done. Everything's signed off. I noticed that Luke and Tana here are installing plywood on some of these walls. What we're dealing with is shear. Back in the day, we had one by eight sheathing. Johnny, Johnny's a big fan of one Huge by eight. Fan, if you guys yes. haven't listened to that podcast episode, uh, you should with Kevin O'Connor. We're adding plywood to some of these interior walls for shear. And what that means is to prevent the house from racking. Obviously, we're doing this right before blue board and after installation. Why yeah. is that? So you gotta be able, you gotta make sure you get your full insulation in the cavity. We got our vapor barrier up and then we have to install 716 plywood on the inside of our SW4 walls. All right, so how do you know that? Because uh, we're looking at the drawing here yep. and I see that we get this notation of, you know, this hash mark. Up here, I'll say SW4. And then we also have an SW4 over here, which is the fireplace wall behind us that's already plywooded. And then you can take that Go over to your legend here and just so SW4 we're showing both faces 716 plywood, plywood blocked yep. and then your your fastener schedule four inches field 12 inches and then calling out your fastener so the engineers yep. called all this out and I see SW4 called up but I also see SW5 yep so SW5 and you just see again you just refer right back to the plan and allow this one 716 plywood on the exterior face that's like the minimum that they want and then on the interior face, they're allowing the half inch jip tack. And if you guys remember, we actually use the Advantex sheathing, which is half inch, so a little bit bigger, structural. but it's also a structural panel. Right. Um, so we're actually, you know, not over-engineered, but we, we, we chose to make sure that we hit that plus. Yep. Um, but this is also saying that we just need half inch jip board, which in our case, we're using blue board since we plaster here in mass. Uh, on the inside and unblocked, unblocked. Yep. but it's really the it's you know what we fastener. have to pay attention to is the fastener schedule on the yeah. exterior there yeah so that's why we see that wall is still a vapor barrier yep but why don't we go upstairs but we should talk about the sega product that we're using so real quick mike just ran upstairs but i wanted to stop and talk about this pocket door system uh this is new for us this is actually i think the second project that we've installed these on and these are from hd pocket doors what i really really like about them is that they are fully assembled the entire track we always want to install a soft open soft close this is all done we're not setting hardware we're not setting up stops we're ordering it per, per the door size and this is coming to us ready to install a couple of differences a lot of these tracks hang off brackets on either of your your jack post here you actually have a laminated uh, structural header that gets screwed up uh, so you need to make sure that your rough framing is nice and level uh, to make to make sure that this is going to work properly um, and then they have the split steel studs they've added some wood blocking to the edge here so when you do wrap and you install your jam you have something to nail to always important to make sure you're using short drywall screws so you're not screwing into your pocket door um, but all in all, I think this is a really nice kit. It's been a lot easier to install for us, um, but I'm excited to see kind of this come to fruition once we install our doors and see just how well they hold up uh, in everyday use. Because the biggest complaint we get with pocket doors is number one, they open and, they open and close really tough and they slam um, and people just feel as though they feel cheap. So um, things like the soft open, soft close is a really nice upgrade. And all in all, I think this kit's gonna do well for us. So we are in the master bathroom here. Um, one thing you guys ask us a lot about is our curbless showers. Mike, we've done a handful of these now. I think almost every bathroom we do, it's curbless. Yeah, right? I don't think, I think the only curb I've done in the last four years is my own house, which I regret. Um, but that's besides the point. What we're dealing with right now is an iJoy's frame. Correct. Uh, floor system. Yep. And the first step for curbless for us, especially when we have hardwood everywhere, is to make sure that we sink our subfloor as low as possible. Here we're dealing with three quarter inch subfloor on top of our eye joist. So, you know, you guys had to essentially cut this plywood out. Yep. Rip up the glue, which was that Advantech stuff that was probably nasty to rip. Yeah, it um, did not want to come up. We'll come through, we just lay out where our shower is gonna be. Snap a line, get a nice straight line, cut that back, and then go through the process. We kind of peel back, expose our eye joist, and then glue and screw blocking to either side cut our pieces of subfloor down here the top cord of the um, eye joist is actually an inch and a half 
So we have two layers of three quarter plywood to flush everything out. We're only dealing with three feet, so it allows us to get that quarter inch per foot to drain in. We have two linear drains from Schluter here. Um, and what we're doing is we're gonna be installing them against this wall. Again, that gives us three quarters of an inch go from three quarter down to zero. zero. And we're having to use, you know, that a, I believe it's like a, a dry pack, but it's modified or some sort that can be screwed down to zero, which is super important because if you're using a traditional dry pack, it will actually crumble. Yep. Um, but this will sit totally flush and right down in the mud. And then from here, we're using the, the Schluter product as our waterproofing. Um, the curdy membrane. The curdy membrane. And, but what's really, you know, what everyone always asks us is how we're getting that curbless transition. And this is essentially the start of it right here. And I think a key note is that, you know, to be able to sink the plywood between our floor joists is that you're gluing and screwing it back together. Yeah. So you're remaining, you know, structurally sound underneath that shower. We're adding a level of complexity here because the shower, it's big, it's curbless, it's heated floor, but it's also steam. So this is gonna be you know, one thing that we're combating. Um, it's difficult when you have a window in a steam shower because you're gonna have to combat the warranty. With, you know, in this case, it's Marvin. They're not gonna warranty that window. So we need to make sure that we're preparing to do everything we can to protect the window, but also make it easily removable should there ever be an issue. But you know, beyond that, it's super important that we're not only watertight, but that we're steam tight um, or vapor tight because, you know, having that vapor, vapor is going to get into a lot more spaces than water. So we're going to be using the Schluter product throughout this entire shower because they do offer that steam um, certified, you know, kind of membrane. If you look up here, that black box uh, to the right is actually our steam unit. Really important detail is to think about where that goes and make sure you find a space that is accessible. Uh, in this case, we're gonna, we can hop up to the third floor. We're gonna be putting an access panel in the boys' room in their closet, and you'll be able to walk through that and, and gain access to that space and be able to service it. Another note, which I didn't know, the plumber actually had to run a drain line all the way down to our sewer connection because it's 220 degree water. Yeah. And it has that, to be copper too. It has to be copper. You can't dump 220 degree water, or I, I could be wrong. Someone's gonna correct me if I'm wrong, wrong with the temperature, but you can't dump that into PVC. It's a big issue. Now it doesn't discharge a lot, but we also didn't want to just discharge it anywhere. God forbid it did discharge and you know, over boiling water is coming. Yeah, okay. this is just like a safety too. Right. So the unit will clean itself you know, every couple of weeks and that drains out through the steam outlet, which is actually located down here on this wall. So it's actually draining within the shower itself. Yeah, so that'll drain into the shower and that's, that's just to clean it. But if there was ever an issue, there's a, I believe it's a pressure relief that will go into a copper line that is run all the way down into the basement. And then we have a draining in the basement. Yeah, and that ties in right to, because it's cast down there when I'm dealing with PVC. Correct. So it makes a lot of sense. I think self-cleaning is huge too. That's something to consider when purchasing a unit like that, is that if it's gonna be in an area that you can't clean it, you're gonna want that it to be self-cleaning. Um, and then obviously we have two means of safety. You do have the release you, and you also have a drain for that, but you also have an overflow pan with a drain as well. So I think this is enough for the shower. I, I really wanna to get to this Sega stuff that we keep pushing off, but let's go into the bedroom because I think you can see a lot more of it. Sega Myrex. Myrex. Because I would have said that wrong. Yes. All right. So this is a product that I actually was introduced through Matt Reisinger. He, he was over in Sweden. Correct. And had this yeah. product and I saw it. I mentioned this to our insulator, who's Mass Green Insulation, Ramon. He's been super great to work with. And he's like, I know about it, haven't used it, no one's ever requested it, which is the way I like to work. Yep. Try, try, stuff try new stuff. I want our audience to understand why we why we chose this product, but also the benefits that come along with it. This it will change its permeability based on the amount of moisture. So, from so hold on, permeability is how much moisture can pass pass through it. Pass through it. Yeah, and that's both sides, isn't it? Yeah, because this is considered a so. Smart this vapor this vapor. is actually like a one way product. You have to make sure that the print is on the inside. So from the inside of your building going out, there's a max of, I believe it's about 1.3 perms. And then you wanna use, there's the entire line of different tapes they use, but on the inside, this is actually um, not vapor permeable. So this is sealed. 
And so that's why you want to control any moisture from leaving the house and getting stuck into the wall cavity. But then if any moisture was to go from the outside in, it allows, I believe it's almost four, I think it's like 3.8 perms. This will allow moisture to come through and then the mechanicals inside the house can deal with it there. And, and then that, this and is going to prevent based on the condition of yeah. the wall cavity. Yeah. So it all starts down at like, it's like 0.1, 0.6. It's like, it's really low sure. and that's what it stays at. But depending on which face has the moisture going for, you know, from inside out on the side that's printed, it's a so maximum. It's important to make sure that yeah. your print is facing. It's a in, maximum in. of like 1.3, but from the outside of the building coming in, it allows to go up to almost four, I think it's 3.8. And so that will stop, you know, any water being trapped inside the wall cavity. And then you can, you have condensing issues and stuff like that. This house is a little bit different, right? And we could have spray foam this house, but we ran into the existing house being a structural brick wall that didn't have any cavity for insulation. There's nothing. We actually did a little bit of research and found that we really don't want to insulate that brick wall because we could trap yeah. moisture. Yeah. Your floor joists are built into your structural wall. If you have moisture stuck in there, it's going to eventually rot that wood away. You can rot that out. And then if moisture gets trapped in the wall too, being up here in New England, we have the freeze thaw cycle. Right. So now you're, now you're talking about heaving and yeah. even bigger issues. So we chose to, you know, spray foam the roof. Now why? The reason being, again, it's an old house. Our existing roof line was six to eight inches, maybe. Six and a half. And then we had to, you know, sister everything with LVL. So we didn't have the opportunity to change that insulation value or add exterior insulation to the top of the roof due to architectural elements. So we, we considered, hey, let's spray foam the roof. We'll get the roof all one consistent, you know, material, but let's re reassess our wall cavity situation. Yeah. And that's when we, you know, we worked with Ramon and decided that we were gonna use mineral wool. So we did all of the walls mineral wool, with the exception of our, our brick walls, we yeah, left, left those as is. Yep. Um, because again, number one, we didn't have a cavity. We were leaving parts of the home and that double wide brick, you know, plus our air sealing details was going to perform at a level that was acceptable. Yep. And then from there, we did our new cavity, which we're standing in the addition, the master bedroom to be specific. We used the mineral wall and then talked to the guys over at Sega yep. about this product. Anything we can do to help the house perform better rather than rely on one particular system and look at this holistically is, you know, the benefit. So in this home, we, we have, we're, we're also working with Aero Barrier, but this right here, because we talked about backcocking all our extension jams to our framing. Yeah. Uh, and, and Ken uh, came out and said, if you tape onto the, your extension jam, that's gonna remove the need. Yep. We're insulated behind it, but here's the, this is our air sealing detail. Yep, you can uh, air seal. And then we still gotta go through in detail, like best practice for them. You can see around uh, our plug here. We're gonna still go through and we can take some of the tape and you can wrap it to your plug and seal up everything all the way around. So the more air sealing we do now, the better our chances of getting under that one ACH is our target. Uh, we're in an old house, 1930s, right? Yeah, 1930s, it's a 1930s, 1940s. And we are aero bearing or using the aero bearer product once we get through plaster. So this place will get plastered, boarded, and then we'll have the aero barrier team come in and they'll actually kind of finalize this place and find all those, you know, weak unknown spots. weak spots. Um, and get this place down to, I'm going to, I'm going to call it. We're going to be under one a ACH. You think? I hope so. It would be awesome to hit that point. But. I think it would, especially with an old building in the new. And again, we, we spent so much time engineering this to, to make this home comfortable, uh, because ideally that's what we want to do. We want to make this home comfortable for the homeowner. We want them to enjoy it and not be sitting on the couch wondering why there's a draft coming over their shoulder. I like my house. <laughs> Mine as well. <laughs> Mine's terrible. <laughs> so guys, I'm, I'm glad we're able to do an updated episode. We've missed a lot, but we're going to catch up. Uh, I hopefully, you know, hopefully this was informative to you guys. Um, also introducing a new product uh, into something that we hope to continue to use. I think it's going to be really um, a big benefit to what we do uh, from an engineering standpoint, especially as we work away from using spray foam. Um, and not for any other reason besides the fact that we know there's better options out there and we want to make sure that we're exploring them to offer the best for our clients. So as always, stay tuned for next episode. Follow us on Instagram at NSBuilders and at Mike.Hume. We'll see you guys next time.